Most Logic Pro tutorials don't tell you this, and it's probably why your mix still sounds amateur. They teach you mixing like there's one right way, and you have a completely different sound that carries a lot of valuable context. And I'll be real, I'm totally guilty of this as well. So in this video, I'm gonna break down seven common mixing tips you've probably heard, maybe from me, that might actually be hurting your sound though. You've probably heard the tip mix at low volume. And yes, technically, it's good advice. It helps you listen longer and sometimes make better decisions. But here's what's missing. Sometimes loud music is the reason you started doing this in the first place. Cranking it up can inspire you and that matters too. So instead of always mixing quiet and following that rule, figure out your own volume benchmark, like your personal neutral zone. For me, that's like three green lights on my interface. If yours doesn't have like those notches or lights, you can just throw a piece of tape on the knob wherever you'd like. And then use this benchmark as like where you listen to music most of the time. But when you need it, blast the volume and have fun with it. Side tip, just make sure in Logic, like your stereo out and volume fader here are all set to zero. There's a lot of times when I look at beginner sessions and these faders are turned down and that's gonna affect your output volume. So let's look at number two, and I've been known to say this, so like a good Canadian, I'm sorry. You've probably heard this like a hundred times, your vocal should be front and clear. And yeah, that's usually true for a lot of radio mixes, especially the vocal needs to cut through. But here's the thing, not every song genre needs that. Sometimes the vocal should blend in with the guitars or get tucked behind the drums or even buried in reverb. And I've really got to know this one because my students have such a varying degree of genres. And the point is, you're the mixer, and the mix is your creative call. So when someone says like, the bass needs to be as loud as your kick, or you gotta have vocal doubles, just remember like, there are no absolutes in art. All right, number three, and this one might actually save you money. You don't need to buy every fancy plugin that you see in tutorials. And I fell for this one way back. I bought Serum, which is a synth, because I was watching a lot of dance music tutorials at the time, and it seemed like everyone was using it. But I realized after the fact, I prefer to use Trillion or Arturia since. Don't get me wrong, Serum's amazing, especially if you're producing EDM, but just because someone else is using that plugin on a tutorial doesn't mean it's right for you. This goes for EQs, reverbs, and compressors too. Like you're gonna see me use a lot of FabFilter EQs or Valhalla reverbs. Many tutorials use these two plugins. It doesn't mean though that you need them or that they'll even work for you. Also, pretty much every single plugin has a solid alternative, and half the time there, there's one in Logic that's free and more than good enough. If you're not sure what to do for your sound or what plugins to have, just hit up the newsletter, drop me a question over email, and I'll personally get back to you. Okay, number four is a big one, and I'm definitely guilty of saying this myself. Trust your gut or trust your ears, but Here's the reality with this one, especially if you're new. Your gut only works if you know what your options are. Let's take an example. Let's say you record an acoustic guitar for the first time and it sounds great to you. And yeah, that's awesome. But maybe it sounds great because it's the only acoustic guitar you've recorded that you've ever heard. <laughs> like you haven't tried stereo. You haven't tried different mic placements. You haven't tried a different types of mics or production plugins that give it a unique character too. So yeah, like, Trust your gut, but also get options to ask questions, compare sounds, and ideally get feedback from someone who knows more than you. Okay, number five, and this one totally changed the way I think about mixing. I love it. Everyone talks about volume being your most important production mixing tool. And yeah, I agree. I'm not here to argue that. But here's something most people don't tell you you can actually control volume without actually touching the volume fader. So you're working with like bass and drums here, and you want the drums to feel louder. So most of the time you go and turn the drums up, but you can also turn the bass down. The same result, the drums feel louder in the mix because the bass is down. So this might sound obvious, right? But it's a mindset shift. So instead of always asking, what do I turn up? You could start asking, what can I turn down around it? This shift can also help you manage like clipping, headroom, and get an overall more organized, cleaner mix. And it also doesn't stop there too. Most of the things you do in Logic and mixing are just 
other ways of controlling volume without moving the volume fader. Adding reverb can push a sound back and make it feel further away, less volume. Adding a high cut filter tames the brightness and will pull the sound back too. Like essentially you're lowering that volume in a specific range. Or using a transient shaper like the Free Logic Enveloper tool will reduce the attack sound, which will soften its punch and make it seem less loud, like essentially lowering that the first part of that transient. Panning, compression, EQ, all do the same thing with volume, but without touching the volume fader. Okay, number six, and I'm 100% guilty of this one, again, Canadian, sorry, because I still make a lot of dance music, and in dance, you'll, you'll hear a lot of people talk about side chain compression, especially between the kick and the bass. And it's true, in that context, it's super effective. It creates that signature pumping feel, which ducks the bass every time the, the kick hits, which leaves it the kick more room to breathe and there's more punch in the kick. Okay, but here's the thing. If you're not making dance music, you don't need to do this. And this goes for many other things people teach about that are genre specific. I've seen a lot of producers sidechain things when they're making like folk or other like genres where you might not want to do that. And it doesn't mean to say sidechain is bad in folk music. It's not about that. It's really just about what you learn on tutorials might not always fit the genre that you're working with. So sure, you can try to sidechain something, but just come back to like, is it serving the song? And not always thinking just because you heard it in a tutorial means that I need to do it. All right, number seven. And this one might be the biggest misconception for any beginner just starting out. So let's take the sentence. If I learn to mix, my songs will sound good. Unfortunately, no. So let's fix that sentence with one word. If I learn to produce, my songs will sound good. Yes, that is more true. Like you cannot fix a bad song or production with a good mix. So why is it then that so many people think that mixing is the key? I think it, people think this because there's a big overlap. Like when you're producing, you're already doing bits of mixing. For example, you'll cue some stuff, you'll compress, you'll balance volume, pan, add reverb, but you're doing all these things with the production in mind. So think of it like this. Michelangelo didn't start the Statue of David with a polishing cloth, right? He started it with a chisel. And beginners often grab that polish first, hoping that it will create the statue. So mixing comes later, and often I recommend by someone else to refine what you've already built. So here's a track that I just finished producing, and you're gonna hear it balanced and clear, but not fully mixed. Let me tell you, man, it's never how it seems Cause I've been everywhere, man Feel so alone Okay, so that's the produced version. Now, here's the final mix. Same song, but just more polished. Let me tell you, man, it's never how it seems Cause I've been everywhere, man Feel so So you hear the difference is subtle, but it's still a difference, right? One is more polished. So yeah, learning to mix can help because there's a lot of overlap, but learning production is what makes your music actually sound good. And if you want to learn production fast, watch this video here and I'll teach you how to start a production from scratch, teaching you every step of the way from like a blank logic session to a finished radio ready release. I'll see you there.